I'm really very pleased to have been asked by the Christians who meet as a New Testament assembly in Limavady Gospel Hall to share with you a gospel message from the Bible that is the Word of God. My name is Andrew Grieve, not that that is in any way important, and I'm a Belfast man. I come from the east side of the city. Just behind me you'll see Belfast Lock, and you might even see a ship or two coming out of the harbour. We're going to take a short reading from the Gospel according to Matthew and in chapter 2. And we're going to read verses 1 and 2 of that chapter. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and are come to worship him. Now we know the Lord will bless his word to us, but maybe we'll just for a half a minute or so pray and ask him to do so. Our Father, we thank thee for thy word, for the treasure that it is, and for the wonderful truth that it is the entrance of thy word that giveth light. We pray that as we think about these scriptures that we've read, that they might be blessed to every one of us and written on every heart. And we pray that as we think about the gospel, that thou would speak to those that maybe do not know him as Saviour. We pray for thy blessing in the worthy name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Now one of the things that has gripped our attention over the past month or so is the passing of the late Queen Elizabeth II. I think that it's fair to say for the most of us at any rate of happy memory. On Thursday the 8th of September 2022, when Her Majesty passed from this world into the next, King Charles III ascended the throne. It's probably surprising to most of us to realise that over the last 200 years in the United Kingdom, which of course is the name of the country, there has only been a king for 66 years. For the bulk of that time, there has been a queen. Queen Victoria for 63 years and 216 days, I think it is. And Queen Elizabeth II for 70 years, 214 days. 134 of those 200 years in total has seen a queen on the throne. In November 1948, when Prince Charles Philip Arthur George was born, he was born to be king. For 73 years he had waited to become king. On the 8th of September 2022, with the passing of Her Late Majesty, he became King Charles III by the grace of God of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. Over these three weeks that I've been asked to speak in these videos, I thought that it would be good to focus our minds on the one who is called in Scripture not only the King of the Jews, as we've just read in this chapter, but the King of all the earth, Psalm 47, the King of Kings in Revelation chapter 19, and the King Eternal in 1 Timothy chapter 1, or the King, the Everlasting King. Today I want to think about the coming of the King. And then next week I plan to talk to you about the crucifixion of the King. And then in our third video we'll consider the crowning of the King. Both of those two of course will be according to the will of the Lord. Now I really have no idea how it was that these wise men from the East knew about the King of the Jews. No doubt they'd heard about earlier kings, probably about the victories of King David who, who never lost a battle. Possibly about the splendour and glory of King Solomon, who 1 Kings chapter 10 tells us exceeded all the kings of the earth for riches and wisdom. No doubt they also knew that Judea was now a province of the great Roman Empire with a puppet king. The days of its kingdom and of its kings really were long in the ancient past. The Bible doesn't tell us how they knew it, 
but they seem to have had some knowledge of one who would be king in a unique sense a king who would be greater than all previous kings I think we get a sense of that in their words when they came to Jerusalem to me it is it is really most remarkable that they ask this question where is he that is born king of the Jews not born to be king as Charles the third was but born king if I learn nothing else from this statement this question I learned that when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king as verse 1 of our reading has told us he was not born a subject of any earthly king his kingship is eternal and that of course underlines the uniqueness of the one who was born into this world if we were to look back into Matthew chapter 1 we would read these tremendous words in verse 23 they shall call his name Emmanuel which being interpreted is God with us the coming of this king the coming of the king was nothing less than the incarnation of the Son of God the Apostle Paul wrote about this in 1st Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16 God was manifest in the flesh the Apostle John wrote about it in his gospel in chapter 1 he begins the gospel with these words the word was with God and the word was and the word was God and then he went on in verse 14 to write the word became flesh and dwelt among us what a wonder the Apostle Peter made this confession later in the Gospel of John we believe and are sure that thou art that Christ the Son of the Living God and we sing about it in the words of this lovely Christmas Carol he came down to earth from heaven who is God and Lord of all the coming of the King was the coming of the Son of God the Christ who is over all God blessed forever Romans chapter 9 it is a marvelous truth it is a quite stupendous fact it is a glorious reality but here's a question why why did he come why did the king come in such a manner why was he born in obscurity why was he born into humble circumstances now it is true that in Luke chapter 2 his mother had been told by the angel before his conception that the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there shall be no end verses 32 and 33 tell us that but why were wise men from the east the only ones to acknowledge that he was born king of the Jews why did he not come in a blaze of glory as so many kings would wish to come well we get a sense of the answer to those questions in chapter 1 let me read to you from verse 21 she shall bring forth a son and thou shalt call his name Jesus for he shall save his people from their sins you see although his mother Mary had been told that he would reign when the Lord Jesus was born in Bethlehem the announcement by the angel of the Lord which was given to shepherds in the fields around the town made no mention of it this is what Luke records in his gospel in chapter 2 for unto you is born this day in the city of David not a king but a saviour which is Christ the Lord verse 11 of that chapter the coming of the king 2,000 years ago was not a coming to reign 
he will come to reign and we'll think about that in another video but when he first came to earth when he came as a babe born into this world as a man as a human it was not to exercise the supremacy of the sovereign but to endure the sufferings of the saviour you see there is a problem it is a problem that we all have the problem of sin sin which as the prophet isaiah wrote in unmistakable terms has separated between us and our god he is king he has a kingdom but what is a kingdom without subjects sin has put us all beyond the pale of that kingdom the apostle paul made the observation that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. We read that in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. The Lord Jesus explained to a religious man called Nicodemus, he was a doctor of the Jewish law, that except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. We read that in John chapter 3, verse 3. And then in verse 5 of that chapter, we read that such a person cannot enter into the kingdom of God. We're outside that kingdom, estranged from God by our sin, and it is a major problem. To get a sense of how major a problem it is, we should consider how it is described in Paul's letter to the Ephesians and in chapter 2. In verse 1 of that chapter, Paul explained that they were dead in trespasses and sins. So you can see why the Lord Jesus spoke about being born again. In verse 2, he described them as children of disobedience. The disobedience of Adam was the way in which sin actually entered into the world and we became sinners. In verse 3, he wrote about them being by nature the children of wrath and that indicates that our sin has very serious consequences for us you know it's not that we're outside the kingdom but on otherwise friendly terms with the king you know the way that the nations of the world by and large were on friendly terms with her late majesty even though they weren't actually her subjects we are alienated from God. In fact, that's another word that the Apostle Paul uses to describe us in Colossians chapter 1. We follow our own agenda. As Isaiah describes us in chapter 53 of his prophecy, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. If we're honest with God and honest before God, we will recognize that this is true we're not what we think we ought to be and we're very far from what God requires us to be we have come short far short of the glory of God Romans chapter 3 we need to be reconciled with God we need to have this source of the problem dealt with we need our sins forgiven we need to be saved if we're ever going to be in his kingdom but we cannot save ourselves and that is why he came i love the way that this is described in john chapter 3 verse 17 for god sent not his son into the world to condemn the world we are condemned by our sin but that the word through him might be saved. That's the reason for his coming. That's the reason for his cross, to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. The Bible tells us elsewhere that Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God. He is coming again to set up his kingdom but his coming the first time was that you and i might be part of it if you receive the king the king who came as savior 
you can become a subject of that glorious kingdom and my prayer is that you will do just that